this is the third and final video that I'm filming today because I can't bother filming anymore and my leg will hurt I'm still in my bed. Which means I'm gonna be so my poop channel all the time. Anyway, this is pretty much just something about books to be quite fair. Um books that I feel are underdog books that people never seem to have read and I absolutely love them, so here we go. I've not actually found anyone that read these books, so if you read them, then by all means, let me know what you think. First one is Happy Ever After by Adele Giras. Giras, I think. Um, I absolutely love this book, but I don't know anyone else has actually read this, so I'd love to talk some more about it. And it's like three, it's three books in one. Um, first one, there's The Tower Room, Watching Roses, and Pictures of the Night. Um, and I'll read you the lib on the back. Once upon a time, Megan, Alice and Bella shared the tower room. Theirs was an enchanted world, and the deep friendship that grew through the final year of school helped them to survive a betrayal, treacherousy, treachery, that, that, I can't say that word probably, jealousy and a terrible act of violence. Based on the fairy tales of Rapunzel, Super Beauty and Snow White, this haunting trilogy explores almost turbulent emotions and speaks to our deepest memories. If you read this book, then please let me know and let me know what you thought of it, or if you think it sounds interesting, then I actually found this book at Amazon, so I'm sure it's easy to find. I might find a bookshop, actually, I'm not sure. Next one is probably my all time, if not one of my all time favourite books. I have so many favourite books, but it's definitely one of my all time favourite books. And that is Before I Go to Sleep by S.J. Watson. Memories define us. It's what have you lost yours every time you went to sleep. Your name, your identity, your past, even the people you love, all forgotten overnight. overnight. And the one person you trust. May I only be telling you half the story. Welcome to Christine's life. I love this book so much. Um, but I don't know anyone else has read it, so let me know what you think. If you've read it or you want to read it, then by all means pick it up. The next, this next book is one of the books that I'm obsessed with, and that's John Wyndham, The Chrysalids. When David's old enough to realise that while not visibly abnormal, mentally, he and others are different, more than human, he is terrified of discovery. He lives in a land threatened by the twisted mutants of the cursed fringes, and a land where genetic conformity is the will of God, and any deviation from a minor quirk to a body-warping distortion marks the sufferer as a non-human to be cruelly abused and ruthlessly cast out. If their ability to communicate using thought alone is found out, David and his friends would be in terrible danger. They'd have to run, but where to? And who was this new distant thought voice they can hear? Could it be from the impossible glittering cities that David has dreamt of, places from the past, from before God sent in his terrible earth scorching destruction to punish the wicked? And it might hold the key to their freedom. I really love this book so much. If you've read it, please bombard me with comments about how much you love it or how much you hate it, whatever. But just let me know what you think of it because it's just I really, really like this book so much. This next one is the first book that I ever actually read on my own. The first book actually, yeah, the first book I ever read on my own, and that is Come to the Circus by Enid Blyton. I don't know anyone who's read any Enid Blyton books. Anyone that admits to reading them. But I'm 22 and I will read this book over and over again and devour it and devour it and devour it and never care what people think. I really like Enid Blyton. So if you've read this book, just let me know what you think. I'd love to compare and see what everyone thinks about it. So. Woo! This is actually a series, quite a big one, and I don't know anyone else has read them. There's, there's like two books you can't buy anymore, but it doesn't matter. The story still makes sense. And that is the Little House trilogy series, even. I don't know if anyone's read these, but I love these books. There's so much to fall apart now. 
Anyway, the first one in the series is Little House in the Big Woods. It's autobiographical from the writer Laura Ingalls Wilder. I'll read to the back of all I'll read to the blurbs of things. Many years ago a little girl lived in the big woods of Wisconsin, in a little house made of logs. Her name was Laura, and she lived with her pa and ma and her sister Mary and baby Carrie. There were woods and more woods for miles around and animals who had the homes there foxes, deer, squirrels, bears and wolves. There was always something interesting to do, helping more with the baking, cheese making, maple sugar candy and pumpkin pies. There were real excitement and dangers too, like when there was a bear in the barnyard or the discovery of a tree full of honey in the woods. And always in the lamplit evenings there was a peace and cozy with the family, gathered by the fireside, more with his sewing, part with his fiddle and songs to tell the stories to tell stories and to sing. The second one is Little House on the Prairie, and the blurb is this. They drove away and left it lonely and empty in the clearing, among the big trees, and they never saw the little house again. Pa, Ma, Mary, Laura, and Baby Carrie have left their little house in the big woods. They packed everything into their covered wagon and headed westwards to where the grass grew thick to the ha and high in the pasture that stretched farther than any... I could see to Indian territory. These books are basically set like uh, in the wild, like in the American West. So I can remember my apartment, American West, basically where these books are set. So this is all like American West days. The third book is On the Banks of Plum Creek. For many days, the wagon, the wagon has been moving across the prairie. This must be the place, said Pa. There's the creek. Pa, Ma, Mary, Laura, and Baby Carrie have come a long way. From the little house in the big woods, and the little house on the prairie. Now they're living in a house cut into a grassy bank beside Plum Creek. There's all the fun of paddling in the creek, make, milking the new cow, taking the pails full of ripe plums, and going to school, and making new friends. There's also real dangers too. The day Laura was on the footbridge, when the creek ran overflowing from the spring rains, a prairie fire, and the time Pa was out in a three day blizzard. This is the third of the Little House series and another lasting period based on Laura Ingalls Wilder's own childhood. It's a story of family sharing, fun and adventures and surviving despite many hardships. So yeah, it's like autobiographical. This girl Laura, that she's the ginger one. Um basically her telling her story. This is the fourth one in the series, isn't it? By the shores of Silver Lake. After two poor harvests, heavy doctor's bills because of an outbreak of scarlet fever, Pa Ingalls knows it's time to move from Minnesota. Laura is thrilled at the prospect of moving out west, but her mother's reluctant to go, when it seems they must continue to endure their hardships in indefinitely. Help arrives from unexpected quarter, and the family find themselves heading for Silver Lake and a new life. This is the next book, and it is The Long Winter. Every seventh winter was a hard winter, and at the end of three times seven came the hardest of all. For seven whole months, Laura and her family were cut off in the little town, all alone on the frozen, endless prairie, with the blizzards howling outside. No trains could reach them to bring oil for the lamps, fuel for the stove, or food to feed them till the spring, but Pa was still brave. We'll be right here when spring comes, he said. And they were. The next book, there's actually a book in between. There's a book which tells the story of the man Laura meets in here, which is Little House, Little Town on, Little Town on the Prairie. And it, well, her, as I said, her name is Laura Ingalls until she marries... Mr. Wilder, which becomes Laura Ingalls Wilder, but this is the next one. Um, there's a book before this that tells the story of Mr. Wilder, um, or Manza Wilder, I'm sorry I can tell you that, I'll, anyway, so, but it's not in this. 
You can't buy them anymore, and there's another one. But why is there bubbles on my screen? I'm rambling again, and it's a little town on the prairie. Which I won't spoil anything else, the ending of the series for you, so you can check that out yourself. If you've read them, by all means, let me know. This is a little mini book that was, I think this was written by her daughter, like put together by her daughter. So, the first four years with an epilogue by Rose Wilder Lane. Oh, epilogue. Anyway, it's only a little mini thing, so I'm sure if you've read like a couple of days, and that's just the last even me read it, but let me know if you've read any of this series, because I really love this series more than anything, and it's also the TV series that's based upon this, but the books are so much better, so let me know what you guys think, and this video is 11 minutes long now, so I best click off and have fun. Read all these books that I've put for you, and tell me what you think.